What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Hard Video Order Stuff and today for you guys I'm taking a look at the D4 Duo on-camera microphone from Deity. I want to know what it is, whether it sounds any good and also how it compares to this, the Rode Video Micro and in a bit, if you're lucky, I might play some guitar for you. Alright, I will. It's time for me to shut up and roll the intro. <laughs> As ever, links to everything mentioned in this video I've popped in the description box below. And of course this isn't sponsored content, so it would be great if you could show some love for the channel by hitting that notification bell next to your subscribe button. It means the world to me. Thanks. Just to let you know, Deity sent me the D4 Duo to keep on my condition that anything that I found in this video, good or bad, will go into the video and you'll know if I love it, you'll know if I hate it. You'd be surprised how often I get emails from companies saying, Hello Harv. Please can we send you our product to review? And after I reply with, sure, okay, but it'll be a brutally honest review, they say, ah, uh, okay, never mind then. Deity, on the other hand, said, great, we love getting users' opinions so we know how to improve our designs. Which I think is a really great attitude to have and shows real confidence in the product. So the D4 Duo, there's a few things you should know about it before I go into the testing. So here they are. Firstly, it has two microphones, one pointing forward and one pointing back. They're both in a cardioid pattern, which looks like this. Sort of heart-shaped, hence the name cardio, cardioid. They're also dynamic mics and not active or powered mics. And this means they're not gonna be as sensitive as ones that have batteries. But I see this as a good thing because dynamic mics tend to be so much more rugged, like, they never break. But more importantly, dynamic mics like the D4 Duo don't need battery power or some sort of external power source, so they become so much more convenient. It's just one less thing you have to worry about charging. As you'd expect, the D4 Duo is a little larger and heavier than Rode's Video Micro, but I would still consider it a small and lightweight mic. So when you pick up a Deity D4 Duo, this is what you get in the box. Of course you get a regular TRS cable, the shock mount, dead cats for both the front and back, and of course the microphone itself. The first thing I noticed when I got it out of the box was just how rugged it feels. It's made of metal, it feels solidly built, and it has a lovely kind of matte, spattered matte kind of finish. I feel like I could throw it out the window and it would probably be fine. I'm not going to, obviously. Or am I? No, I'm not. The D4 Duo comes with a Rycote shock mount, which helps to isolate the mic and also helps to minimize kind of any kind of rumble from handling the camera. It snaps really solidly into the mount, so I'm really confident that it's it would just never fall out. It also comes with dead cats for both ends, and one thing I noticed is just how it takes quite a bit of effort to take them on and off, and I see that as a good thing because I find that with the one that you get with the Rode Video Micro, that one actually I find falls off quite often. The headline feature of the D4 Duo, of course, is the fact that it has two modes. You've got dual mono, where you just use the front mic and it will split it to left and right, or you can switch it to front and back mode. There's also an input on the side where you could plug in a wired lav or something like Rode's wireless go system. When you do this, it bypasses the rear microphone. Well, now I think you know enough about this mic. Let's see how it sounds. And of course, there's no point hearing it in isolation. I'm gonna compare it to a few other microphones. So let's start with a control test. And this is really just to demonstrate the reason that we choose to put better microphones on top of our cameras. So this is just the horrible scratch audio that you get from the internal microphone from the Sony a7S III. Next, the D4 Duo. And 
then the Rode Video Micro. And then for a real measure of quality, the very expensive AKG C414 studio microphone. I've always been a proponent of editing audio much like you would edit video. So I'll add a touch of EQ and compression and show you the before and after. Next, I took the D4 Duo out to see what it sounded like whilst shooting a couple of shots. First, we have just the front mic on its own. Next, we have the D4 Duo in front and back mode, and I've balanced the left and right signals so they're completely equal. Ideally, you'd want to listen to this with headphones because it's hard panned left and right. Effectively, you're getting a stereo signal. Next we have the Rode Video Micro. And to me that sounds good too. Next I'm going to have a little chat with my dad with the D4 Geo in front and back mode. Hey dad. Hello. Do you notice anything different about my rig? Um, the core colour is yellow. It is. Yeah. It's a new microphone. Ooh. That it's got two capsules, so one faces towards you, one faces towards me. Okay, so that's why you can talk to me and... So this is one thing to bear in mind with the D4 Duo. However you use it, it's best when you do some editing, just to add that polish. But particularly when you're using it in front and back mode. Of course, what you get is a stereo file with one side being the front and the other side being the rear. First thing I'm going to do is detach audio. There are a number of ways of doing this, but I'm just going to make a copy and paste it right over the top. Next, I'm going to select one of them, Go into the audio configuration and change the mode to dual mono and then I'm going to turn off one of the channels. Then I'm going to select the other track and then deselect the other channel. The reason we're doing this is because I'm isolating the front mic and the rear mic. I'm making them both mono and I want two separate tracks that I can edit independently. So in this case we have the rear mic on top which is my voice and then we have the front mic at the bottom which is my dad. As you can see some of my voice has bled into the front mic and some of my dad's voice has bled into the rear mic. This is really easy to clean up and it's well worth it. So I've hit the R key which is the shortcut for the range selection tool and I'm just going to work my way along the front mic track and just reduce the volume when I'm talking and I'm going to do the opposite for the rear mic when my dad speaks. Once that's done I'm going to select all the tracks and create a new compound clip. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to add some EQ and compression to both tracks simultaneously and it's just the easiest way. I'm just using the stock EQ plugin in Final Cut and for the compression I'm going to use Crumple Pop Levelmatic, a truly brilliant plugin that I reviewed a little while ago and I'll link that video below. For the EQ I'm just adding some simple boosts and cuts. I won't go into exactly what I did in this video just because I've done loads of tutorials on this in the past and I'll link the very best ones for you in the description box below. Needless to say it was a big improvement. Next I did some subtle compression using Levelmatic and again I did a full video on this it's definitely worth checking out as I said it is linked below. Brilliant plugin that just makes a huge difference to the audio in your video. So these tweaks have had a massive impact on the quality. Let me show you the before and after.
Hey, Dad. Hello. Do you notice anything different about my rig? Um, the core colour is yellow. It is. Yeah. It's a new microphone. Mm. That f- it's got two capsules, so one face is towards you, one face is towards me. Okay, so that's why you can talk to me and... Hey, Dad. Hello. Do you notice anything different about my rig? Um, the core colour is yellow. It is. Yeah. It's a new microphone. Mm. That f- it's got two capsules, so one face is towards you, one face is towards me. Okay, so that's why you can talk to me and... So now you've heard what the D4 Duo sounds like, let's go through the pros and cons. And we'll start with the pros, and the biggest pro for me with this product is its versatility. It's simple if you need it to be, but there are lots of routing options. I'm sure there are people out there that are going to make some really clever use of this. Within this, there's the option of using the front and back mode, almost like a stereo mic, and this to me is a really, really big thing with this microphone. I love the sound you get, it's so 3D sounding. I also want to compliment the way the two microphones sound. I particularly like how rich the low end is. I mentioned this earlier on in the video and it's a really well made product, it feels really beefy. Lastly I was surprised how high output it was. This is a good thing in my book, it means you can turn your preamp volume down on your camera. Next the cons and the first thing I'd say is that the audio from this definitely needs editing. It needs EQ and probably compression to get the best out of it. I also found the dead cats a little bit fiddly, they're kind of hard to get on and thankfully they're hard to get off. It's only sort of a con. Lastly, the D4 Duo does cost a little bit more than others, so really what you need to ask yourself is do you need the flexibility and versatility you get with the D4 Duo? Speaking of other microphones, how does it compare to the Rode Video Micro? When we compare the Rode Video Micro to the D4 Duo, I find the D4 Duo far more versatile, definitely more rugged, and it is more sensitive. One other thing is I do prefer the sound quality. I just find it slightly more rich on the D4 Duo. However, I would say this is a little bit unfair to compare them because they are different products and the D4 Duo is quite a bit more expensive than the Rode Video Micro. Plus, I also really love the audio quality you get from the Video Micro. I think it may actually be more detailed in the top end. Sure, I found it a little bit trashy when recording guitar, but then that's not its intended purpose. And it's worth noting, it is lighter and still a really well-built product. And finally, to my opinion of the D4 Duo, and overall, I'm really impressed. It's a good sounding mic. I mean, I wouldn't use it to record my guitar, but as an on-camera mic for sort of audio to capture whilst you're on location, it's brilliant. It's also really ruggedly built. It feels pretty indestructible. It's versatile. It does lots of different things. There's lots of different combinations of inputs and using lav mics that you can use, all for a fairly wallet-friendly price. So what's not to like? I know that Destin from the YouTube channel Smarter Every Day is currently using the D4 Duo, and they've got nearly 10 million subscribers. No, no big deal there at all. And it seems to work really well for his style of filming something and then flipping it around to vloggy style. But for me, the way that I'll be using the D4 Duo is when I'm out filming and this gives me a really nice stereo spread when you've got it on front and back mode. Being from an audio background myself, I think audio in video is so underrated. And this one, just giving you that stereo track to work with, it's, it just gives you that extra level of immersion, and I love it. You heard earlier what it sounded like, and um, yeah, I, I love it. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask me questions about this mic in the comment section below if you want to. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has hand-picked this video for you, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. <laughs> Just hang me